Hi everybody, it's Scott and Megan here. We're doing another Plum Crazy Adventure. A lot of you guys actually send in questions to us all the time, and one of them that we always get is about parking around the Pittsburgh airport and how to get into it. So today we decided instead of answering those questions, we're gonna show you. Right, Meg? Yep. <laughs> so everybody, why don't you just join us and let's go into the Pittsburgh International Airport and we'll show you guys around a little bit. As you can see, we're going to be going to Pittsburgh International Airport, which is also PA 576. Here we go. We're getting ready to go into the Pittsburgh International Airport. Now you do want to keep right here as of right now, because that is going to get you into the airport. You don't want to take the PA Turnpike 576 East and end up going to Washington PA by accident. It takes a bit to get off of it. So right now we're going to go in the right lane and we are going to show you the terminal, which right there, beautiful Pittsburgh International Airport. Now as we come through here, this is where you're going to go for arriving flights. So if you are picking up someone that has flown into our gorgeous city, this is where you're going to want to go to, on the right hand lane. Since we are not picking up, we are going to go through through traffic on the left. But keep an eye out and you will be able to see which airline your person should be coming out of over there in those signs. As you can see, they are doing some construction. This is actually different from when I was even here a week ago. So please just watch what you are doing take your time and because, pay attention <laughs> yes please pay attention because we are actually mer merging with the departure lane right here in order to be able to exit the airport look at that gorgeous spirit airlines taking off right there Ooh, and it's already banking 258 that one might be going to Vegas. So one of the things that a lot of people don't know about is if you mess up, there is another way around this. and You don't have to go clear back out to the interstate or anything. You can just do the loop around. This is the return to the terminal road. So you just take a left instead of heading back toward Pittsburgh, 376. Make sure you pay attention because there is traffic merging in here with you from the gas station and the other parts of the parking lots here. And you just take the loop back around on the back side of the parking lot here and it'll take you right back into the entrance right where we just came in just a few minutes ago. As you can see, there are plenty of rental cars available again. You will just need to talk to them in the terminal in order to be able to get shuttled over to pick up your Rental rental. Cars. And over there is lots of dirt because again we are under construction. Now we are actually coming up onto the departure section of the Pittsburgh Airport. And as you will see, as we get up here. actually see the different airlines that are being serviced so that you can get out close to where you are going to need to check your bags. Quick and simple and easy if you're planning on dropping anyone off to our airport. And then as you can see, short-term parking garage is on the left. If you wanted to drop off bags and then park in the short-term parking garage, you could certainly do that. Or you could even go over to the long-term parking or the airport exit if you wanted to, say, drop off your wife with the little ones and the, the bags and such and have her wait for you and then you park and go and drop, walk in yourself rather than having everybody have all those bags with you. And then deja vu, I feel like we were just here. Yeah, we were. 
Now, if you guys were in a big hurry and you totally forgot to fill up your tank before you came into the airport, the gasoline actually is not too bad here. It's three sixty nine dollars a gallon, but there is a gas station right here on property. Um, you can just pull in and go fill up before you take off to head back home, like if you got a long drive, an hour or so to head back to your house. Uh, instead of worrying about trying to find a place after you get back on 376 or 576, uh, you can just do it right here and right here at the 7-Eleven Sunoco station. As you can see, this is the parking lot. If you guys decide to park in the up back part of the parking lot, it may not be bad a bad decision to find like a little kiosk where the buses will pick you up and go and get on one of the buses and have them deliver you up to the airport. However, please make sure that you check the website because they have been doing intermittent shuttles. So you may get stuck walking all this way because they do not have shuttles running a particular day. Yep. And keep that in mind uh, when you come here because you may have to allow some extra time for you to walk across the parking lot to get to the tramway to get you into the airport to get you to the TSA or to baggage claim, one of the two. And that does take some time. So figure about a half an hour extra time just to get across the park. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and park in the long term, which is also employee parking because we get the first hour for free. This is also the area that you are going to park if you are planning on staying at that beautiful hotel, the Hyatt Regency. All right, so one pro tip that we always, always tell everybody to do when you're traveling with us, when you get to the airport, especially if you're on a week to two week vacation, always, always, turn and take a photo of the sign where you're parked at so you don't forget because it's always in your phone. Well, this has saved us a lot of confusion after we've gotten back from many, many vacations here. So pro tip, take a photo. As a heads up, today the extended parking shuttle is running. Woohoo! Now, unfortunately, we aren't flying out today. That's going to be in less than a week. Yep. But we wanted to be able to take this opportunity to take our time and show you some things around here to make your next flight out of here a little easier. Now guys, I just want to reiterate, all the way out there is extended parking. This is long-term parking. Way, way down there is where you can get onto the moving walkway. So when I say to give yourself a half hour just to get into the terminal, I'm not kidding. Especially if you decide to go and stay in that extended parking area and the shuttle isn't running that day. All right, we're officially doing Nick's favorite thing. We are standing on the moving walkway. Go. Say, raw. <laughs> He's not going to run. No, no, no. I was trying to get him to go raw. Ah. Uh. Well, you're not kidding. He won't move. That is not what it is for, as far as he is concerned. This is his favorite ride at the airport. Okay, instead of going to TSA, we are going to go right on up. The escalators because this is where we're going to check our bags. Ready, Nick? Say ready. Show, show mommy how you do it. Good job. Okay, right up here is where you're going to go. Spirit Airlines is there. JetBlue, if you're planning on heading towards Boston, that's always a great option. There's also Frontier Airlines and a few others that are on down the way a little bit. So definitely some spots to go. Um, if you are taking charter flights, Allegiant is all the way down there in the corner, which if you are coming in from the departure section, it's going to be the very first door that you're going to come out of, which is right over here. If you happen to have a few minutes before you go through TSA, always make sure that you check out some of the art installations that they have. For instance, Julie Lee has a silk photography and video 
collage that is right here called In Her Glory. And you can see she's done some really interesting art by putting photos onto what I'm assuming is silk presses. So right here is the main terminal area on the third floor, which is ticketing. And we normally fly for weekend trips, so we don't often check bags, so we're not up here very often. And Scott was very excited to hear about the Bridges sculpture that they have. So yeah, this we is, are going to check it out. This is something I've never seen before, so I, I'm very excited to come down here and see this. Doesn't it look like a Transformer? Yeah, it does. Kind of looks like Bumblebee transforming out of into a bridge. <laughs> I know. Now, if you want to see this Bumblebee, make sure that you stop by the southwest section of this airport. Boy, do we have a lot of southwest. Pretty cool. Hey, buddy. What does that say? Oh, his name is Arch. Arch, very good. Yep, that's Arch. If you want to know where Arch gets all of his bridges from, there's this really interesting piece here. It talks about the Smithfield Street Bridge. I apologize. It was constructed between 1881 and 1883. Then it talks about the Free Sisters Bridges. How many of you have been on one of those bridges for a festival? Always fun to do that down there in downtown. There's also the Point Bridges. You see Fort Duquesne Bridge, constructed in 1969, and the Fort Pitt Bridge, constructed 1959 creepy thing is there just one right on top of the other as you can see this kind of gives you a depiction of why thing or how things come together come you can see right here this is take my finger the Monongahela We're go this way. The one up so. there is the Allegheny be here and they become the Ohio hey. right there at the west hey. end come on Come on. Now, if you want to take it a step further, because you have time, you can actually see where they put each of the bridges on arch. The hot metal bridge. Our oldest son, Christopher, for his eighth grade project, actually did a project on a bunch of different bridges here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and I believe the hot metal bridge was one of them. Hot metal bridge was definitely one of them, because we had never been on it before. Yep. Then there's the Liberty Bridge, and of course the West End Bridge. Now, this is probably the one we use the most because we don't often take the Fort Pitt Tunnel out of the city. We'll take it coming in. I've drove across this. Yeah, I think you have. <laughs> but we uh, tend to take the West End Bridge in order to get through the city. Pittsburgh, with three rivers and its many magnificent bridges, rivals other bridge cities of the world, including Paris with its 38 river crossings, and Venice and its 409 bridges, spanning 150 canals. At present, there are 30 bridges and river crossings on the Monongahela, Allegheny, and Ohio rivers within the city of Pittsburgh. Then there's another 29 in the other communities of Allegheny County. So that is... <laughs> <laughs> that is 59 bridges in Allegheny County, just across the rivers themselves. Alrighty, I think it's time for us to go down. Good job, buddy. Hold Daddy's hand. Alrighty, we're going to go down to baggage claim. Going all the way down. All the way down. As you can see, the Alamo is completely decked out for St. Patty's Day, as is the Hertz. It's always fun. And 
if you need to grab something before you go to the car, they do have a 7-Eleven that is open during specific hours. It's not open all day. But you can see baggage claim A, B, D, C is on the left. And I like it right up here in the, the boards. It actually shows which area you need to go to to reclaim yep. your baggage. London Heathrow. Yep, British Airways. We are actually towards the end of the arrivals section if you were driving. And, oh, this is cool. They have some information about the Great Allegheny Passage here as well as the Gap Map. So if you are here on a recreational trip, here's some options that you can do, such as biking the Great Allegheny Passage, that's a big one, go to Falling Water, Ohio Pile, or the Sager Mosaics, which I actually don't know anything about, and now I need to research that. Just when I think I know everything about this area, something else pops up. Yep. This is where you, you took me out and I started to freak out about right in here. Yep. Because I realized that we're that's really, an Ohio pile. really far away from the, the ground. It wasn't that far away. It was for me. So. Okay, if you are traveling with a pet, either a service animal or otherwise, they do have a pet relief area, which is down here at the bottom of the baggage claim area and almost at the very end of the uh, roadway for yeah. the departure pickups. After your or pooch arrival is, pickups. Yeah, after your pooch has traveled all that way, it's probably time for it to either pee or poop or both. Yes. Believe me. Um, so this is definitely a nice little place to know about to come yes. down here and let them relieve themselves and, and be very happy they're back on the ground again and not 32,000 feet in the air. <laughs> <laughs> now, by that same token, if you have a car rental, uh, you're going to check in at the desks that I just showed you. I showed you a couple of those. And then they will tell you which stair to go to in order to go get your car if they do not have to shuttle you over. Uh, most of the time they will have a few over in this area. They'll show you where to go so you can pick it up rather than getting shuttled all the way over. But definitely talk to the car rental agents so that they can get you set up. One of the really cool things that they have out here on the arrival section are art installations. As you can see, this is one of them, and because it says do not touch, certain somebody is desperate to touch it. Yeah, he <laughs> is. All right, let's go see the next one because I think that one's really cool. Check this one out. It is so many little paper, paper airplanes. airplanes. That is really cool. That makes one big airplane. That is really cool. Very neat. Just think I probably contributed to a lot of those back in school. What, a lot of the paper airplanes? Paper airplanes, yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Here we go out. Next favorite part. Huh. Say bye bye. <laughs> Riding right along your short-term parking, 33A, 35A, 37A. And you got short-term parking on this side too. Now we're passing right over top of the roadway here. And actually where the buses come through and go drop people off and pick people up. Rental cars, returns, stuff like that. If by some chance you are actually are going to be staying here at the Hyatt, you would take two escalators all the way down to get to your entrance to go into the Hyatt, which we'll explore that a little bit later on. Heard this is a beautiful hotel, awesome to stay at. But this would be your entrance into the hotel. Right here. All right, one thing I always remember, remember where you park, row one, long-term extended parking, rows four through eight is on up, and then there's the hotel. 
So we are in long-term parking row one. So we're gonna go right back out this door. And this is why I said it was very important to remember to take a photo of that sign so that you remember where you parked. Now, if you are planning on staying at the Hyatt Regency, you will end up parking in this long-term area in order to stay at that hotel. So you're not gonna get any added benefits parking-wise by staying at the on-site hotel, but if you do have a 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. flight, it might be worth being able to come in the night before and not worry about flying or trying to get yourself to the airport that early, especially if you are the local. As we are exiting the parking lot, this is the tramway that we were on. Oh, bless you, Nick. Bless you. And this is the beginning part of it. Now, Megan, once I pull out here, pan all the way down through and show them how far that is. There she is, all the way down to the cut hall. Now, he said tramway. Technically, it is a moving walkway. Yeah. I'm now, not, my sorry. other concern is with that. The moving walkways aren't always working. For instance, we were walking in today to use the restroom. The last one was not working, so we had to walk that by foot. Sometimes the full section, the full sections are not working. Yep. So keep that in mind. Now, as you can see, if we were to turn right here, this is where they consider hotel parking, which is also a part of the long-term parking. This is a heads up. They like you parking on this side because they have an outside entrance on this side of the parking lot. You can also find a little bit more parking on this side as a heads up, kind of a little pro tip. But we are going to go ahead and make our way towards the exit. Now the exit for long term and for extended, it's all going to be the same pay boots like this. Okie dokie, we are officially exiting the airport. So we, because we live on the other side of the city, are going to go ahead and go to 376 East towards Pittsburgh. We could also take 576 if we were going towards Washington, which is a toll road. We could be going north towards 79. There's a lot of options, but they're very clearly marked so you can figure out which way is going to be best for you. For us today, we get to go through the city. Okay, here she comes. We have another flight coming in. We are big dwarfs. This is one of our favorite things to do on a Sunday afternoon when we're not flying ourselves. Just come check out all of the amazing planes coming in and out of the airport. There she is, I believe it's another Delta. Sound amazing. There she goes. Well, everyone, I think that's officially going to end our Pittsburgh International Airport video. And as you can see, Nick is over it. Yep, he's ready to go home. Actually, he's ready to go eat, so we're actually getting ready to go get some dinner and stuff because we're starving but anyway guys we really hope you enjoyed it and do keep in mind that everything that you've seen here is going to change because pittsburgh international airport is changing there's a lot going on a lot of construction stuff so what you saw in the video today might not be the same the next time you come in so bear that in mind also keep in mind that if you are coming to the pittsburgh international airport to fly out give yourself some extra time because of the construction lines and that long, long, long walk into the building. Yeah. So, but hey, uh, guys, I hope you really enjoyed the video. If you did, do us a great big favor. Give us a great big thumbs up on the video. Like and subscribe our, to our channel. And if you haven't done so already, go follow us on Facebook and Instagram too. Yes, and you'll see more of that little goofy guy behind us in these videos. <laughs> He's having too much fun. He's ready to go eat, I can tell you that. And I am so impressed that you got through all of that. So before he gets us laughing any more than he already is, uh, are you guys ready for your next fun, crazy adventure? <laughs> because we're ready to get you there. Bye -bye. See you soon, guys. Bye.